بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله كيف أصبحتم؟ How's the energy this morning? Good? How, how, how late did everyone stay up last night? 1 a.m.? 2 a.m.? 3 a.m.? Anyone 3? Any 4s out there? MashaAllah. It was, I mean, it was a late night, so I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy that many of us were able to wake up, including myself, to get down here. So, barakallahu feekum. The, the topic that was chosen for this morning is the question of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees what He decrees. We see that very often our lives are playing out in a very specific way. There are circumstances that happen in our personal lives, whether it's a type of difficulty in the form of an illness or an ailment or the loss of a loved one. We see the inability to achieve some of the things that we want in life, whether that's to get married or have children or to get the job that we want. And we ask a lot. You know, when, especially when we're in need, we're turning to Allah and we're saying, Ya Allah, give us. Ya Allah, I need. Ya Allah, please help me. And then furthermore, when we see realities playing out internationally and we see even locally and we see the, the types of real serious difficulties and challenges, the type of oppression and injustice. I mean, we're all observing and watching what's happening in, 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 to the, our Uyghur brothers in China and how devastating that is. We see what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Kashmir. We see what's happening to the Rohingya, who are um, the least cared about people in the world, according to Amnesty International. The least cared about people in the world. This is probably one of the worst times to see in modern time the attacks and the demonization of Muslim minorities. It's very, very, very hard to watch. And so when we look at the spectrum of, rea of, of realities that play out, very often the question that comes to mind is why? You know, why is this happening? And how am I supposed to process all this? How am I supposed to make sense of this? And this is where the most powerfully liberating force for the human mind and heart come into play, and that is our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, this world of ours that we live in, that is seemingly so complex and sophisticated and full of intricacies and problems and challenges, this world is all but a simple creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah commanded this existence into creation through the power of kun, fayakun, be, and it will. And this existence is a possibility, by the way. This existence of ours, it's a possibility. It didn't have to exist. It's not, it wasn't a, a necessity. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His hikmah, through His will, through His desire, He brought this existence into being. And so as Muslims, the way we theorize this world is we say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hakim Al-Alim, He has willed through His infinite profound wisdom this existence as it is. And very often we want to challenge even that frame and say, but why? You know, well, fine, okay, God willed it, but why? But the question that I want you and I to ask ourselves is rather than challenging that premise around Allah, why don't we challenge the premise of our question? That are we really in a position to say why? Meaning that I myself, as Yasir Fahmi, I had no say in my existence. I came into being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose through His infinite wisdom that I be here. And so my duty is to figure out what my Creator wants me to do in this life. Because if I sit there and insist on asserting the why question, 
then it's going to go into a space of infinite regress. I'll never actually develop a constructive, logical, theorized answer that, cons that conforms to myself unless I am willing to say, I surrender to the wisdom and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is al-hakim al-alim, because he is the most wise and the all-knowing. There's a story that, 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 that is referenced in the hilya of Abu Nu'aym al-Asfahani, hilya al-awliya, and it's about a, 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 a slave who, and it's, a, it's a longer story, but the story goes that he was, there was a drought, and it was during the time of, of uh, many of the great, awliya, the great tabi'een, Malik ibn Yinar and others, and there was a drought, and he went out seeking, they, they, they went out seeking rain, the prayer of rain, and, and no rain would come. All of the people went out, and except at night when everything got dark, this slave came out under the cover of darkness, and he raised his hands, and he said, أَقْسَمْتُ عَلَيْكَ بِحُبِّكَ لِي أَن تَنزِلْ عَلَيْهِمْ مَطَرًا and no one saw him. He went under cover of darkness, but Malik ibn Yinar was still kind of lingering behind, making dua. So he heard this slave say this. Oh Allah, I swear upon you, by your love for me, bring rain down upon these people. And then Malik says that in the moment, the rain started to descend. So later on, Malik went to him and said to him, you know, how could you make such a claim? How could you claim that Allah loves you so much? So he said, please leave me alone. I'm a, I'm a simple slave. Ya Sayyidi, just let me be. And he didn't look him in the face. Just please let me go back to my quarters. Malik followed him. Ultimately, he found that this was the home of a local slave trader. This was when slavery was still a reality in societies. The next day, Malik went to that home and he was ultimately able to purchase that slave. So the slave said to him, you know, Ya Sayyidi, why did you purchase me? I'm a, I'm a very weak slave, I'm worthless, I, I, I can't do much for you. He said, I didn't, I didn't buy you, if you will, so that you can serve me, but rather I paid this money so that I can serve you. I was there last night and I saw you go and I saw you make those claims and swear upon Allah in that fashion. How could you say such a thing? How could you say categorically, Ya Allah bi hubbika li, by your love for me? So he said something very profound that I think a lot of us can learn so much from. He said, Allah, who alladhi abda'ani bi hubbihi. It is Allah who who loved me first. He's the one who loved me first. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Allah, can create, can will, can choose anything He wants in His infinite profound wisdom. And from all of those endless possibilities, He chose to create me. So when someone chooses to do something, that means that they care about that thing. And that the fact that Allah chose to create me, means that He loves me. And so you see the beautiful, simple logic? That He was so certain that Allah loved him and cared about him, just because He brought him into existence. Because He chose. It's like, when I choose to do something, that means that that thing is, a, is an issue of concern for me. And so brothers and sisters, Allah, the most wise, the most knowing, in His infinite profound mercy, chose to bring us into existence. That means He wants for us something. And so our duty is to feel blessed and honored that He chose us. And I know that that flies, you know, in the face of, of, of a lot of what we think today, which is, why do we even exist? I don't want to exist because existence is not nice. <laughs> you know, for a lot of people, it's painful, it's agonizing. Why would I even, why was I even brought here when I can't fulfill the things that I want? But see, you see the language, it's all wrong. It's not about what I want. It's not about what I want for myself. 
But it really is all about what Allah wants for us. And that's the only space where we will find certainty and confidence. It's Billahi wa ma'Allah. That's why when Sayyidina Ibrahim was thrown in the fire by his people who rejected him, and that fire was this huge gargantuan flame, and Jibreel came to him and said, Alaka haja, is there something that I can do for you? Do you have a need? He said, from you I have no needs. I have, there is nothing you can do for me. All I will say is, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best to be relied upon. There is no one else that I need other than Allah. Because he is the one who brought me into this world. He is the one who will exit me from this world. And I will exist in his refuge in his sacred, beautiful, safe refuge. That's why when Musa alayhi salam was running with his people, fleeing from Fir'aun, and the entire you know, people of Banu Israel were with him, and they arrived at the Red Sea, and they began to decry, inna la mudrakun, that verily we're going to be caught. What did Musa alayhi salam say? With certainty, from the core of his self, he said, kalla, no. Allah is with me. Allah will guide. See, it's not that he said, Kalla inna ma'ya Rabbi, he sa, 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 sayansuruni. No, no, he said, Sayahdeen, he will guide me. He will guide me means that any direction that Allah wills is good. Even if Allah wills that we die in that moment, that is khair. People think that what that meant was, okay, then thereafter the sea must part and Musa must continue to live. No. He said, Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah is with me, He will guide. I don't fret. I don't worry. I don't worry because Allah is with me. And if Allah wills that this is the moment of our death, then Alhamdulillah, because that is the will of Allah. And I trust Allah. Because really, brothers and sisters, if you take the time to think about it objectively, is there any other being in existence that really is worthy of that type of trust? No matter how much your parents love you, no matter how large your salary is, no matter how confident you are in your home, there is no space where you are purely, categorically, amin, safe, except with iman. Iman is where you find true safety. Islam is where you find true peace. These are ma'ani, these are meanings that are metaphysical. They don't exist in form. These are things that settle in the heart. That's why when iman and Islam reside within us in their fullest and most beautiful sense, then we truly never fear. We truly never worry. We truly never become so attached to the circumstances of this dunya. No matter how dreary and difficult many of them are. By the way, it doesn't mean that we don't try. You know, I'm not giving a message of apathy or, you know, just kind of give up and don't care. No, you have to work and do what Allah expects of us. No, Allah expects of us. Do and Allah will see your actions. No matter how devastatingly painful and how seemingly impossible it is to change the conditions of our brothers and sisters, the Uyghurs, or those in, in Rohingya, no matter how impossible it seems like China is so far off and it's really difficult to even touch. No, we have to do our part, whether it is to advocate the way our dear brother Sulaiman does regularly. I, I bumped into him in, a, in Cambridge once in, in Harvard Square. He was, he was doing a rally. And I didn't even know what was happening, subhanAllah. You have to advocate and call and call your representatives and give and donate and support and be the voice for the voiceless. 
But those are the asbab, those are the means that Allah has placed to say, how much of these asbab are you going to negotiate meaningfully? But then what Allah wills to do and chooses to do is the business of Allah. And that's not a place where we should apply too much of our minds. You know, the, the topic is what? Behind the curtain? Don't worry so much about what's happening behind the curtain in the sense that it's, it's, it's taken care of. It's Allah. It's Allah's taking care of it. It's all in His qabda, in His divine constriction. يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ He will do what He wills through his rahmah, through his mercy and his love. This is not, you know, sometimes people hear that, they say, you know, you know, a'udhu billah. People say, what's, what's this pettiness? You know, just kind of doing what he wants. No, astaghfirullah. A'udhu billah to even utter those words. No, this is Allah's rahmah. Inna rahmati sabaqad ghadabi. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa. It was the most merciful. Allah, Allah manifested himself in the beginning of creation through mercy. And by the way, on the day of judgment, الملك يومئذ الحق للرحمن that it is truly today all dominion belongs to the most merciful so in the beginning it was about mercy and in the end on the day of judgment will be about mercy and all of us exist in this dunya through the rahmaniya rahimiya paradigm it's all about Allah's grace and mercy that allows us to function and exist and in the Akhirah, as the Prophet said, we will only enter into Jannah by the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, we shouldn't spend so much time trying to come into this like deeply hyper-rational orientation of you have to give me a why response, a response to my why question that convinces me. Well, what if, what if, and this is most likely the case, that my rational orientation is incomplete. That I, that there is a reality that the end point is always going to be the space of Allah surrendering to Allah. I can sit here and give you all sorts of wisdoms that may make you feel temporarily good, but it's not the actual ultimate reason. That's why when the Prophet ﷺ, when he went through the, the traumatic pains of Ta'if, the traumatic pains of Ta'if, and he was pelted and bloodied and bruised, and he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said, Ya Allah, you know, Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala nas. Oh Allah, I'm, I, I'm so weak. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm complaining to you about my weakness and how people have forsaken me. إِلَى مَنْ تَكِلُونِي To whom do you, for, to, to, do you leave me? إِلَى بَعِيدٍ يَتَجَهَّمُونِي أَوْ إِلَى عَدُوًا مَنْ لَكْتَهُ أَمْرِي Or it's someone who's distant, who just, who, who, who neglects me or to, to some enemy that you've given control, that you've given power over me. And, but look at what he said right after that. So he starts off by saying, Ya Allah, I'm really struggling here. It's very difficult. And it's okay to struggle. We're human beings. We're expected to struggle. If the Prophet struggled and he articulated his struggle to Allah, then certainly we are okay articulating our struggles to Allah. And that's the most beautiful place to do that. In an intimate setting between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you sit down, you say, Ya Allah, I'm really having a difficult time with my life. And then he said to Allah, he said, he said to Allah what he knows of Allah. أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ You are the most merciful. وَأَنْتَ رَبُّ الْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ And you are the Lord of the weak. وَأَنْتَ رَبِّي See how intimate it is? You are my Rabb. إِنْ لَمْ يَكُمْ بِكَ غَضَبٌ عَلَيَّ فَلَا أُبَالِي As long as you're not mad at me, as long as you're not displeased with me, then I'm okay. وَلَكِنَّ عَافِيَتَكَ هِيَ أَوْسَعُ لِي But your afia, your ease, it's more expansive for me. Yani, uh, some afia would be nice. <laughs> but it's, all, it's, it's up to you, Ya Allah, what you will for me. That's a relationship built on trust and love. And that's the goal that all of us should pursue in our spiritual journeys in this brief existence we have on earth. 
we want to develop two things ma Allah fundamentally we want to know and trust Allah and we want to love Allah when we know Allah then we will trust Allah and when we trust Allah we will love Allah and then we will lovingly surrender to Allah's will and decree and the only way we develop that paradigm of knowledge, trust, love, surrender is by starting off with knowing Allah. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It begins by coming to know Allah. We have to study Allah's names and His attributes. Become very familiar. I can challenge myself and all of us today that if I ask you who is Allah, that a lot of us are going to stumble and struggle to explain who Allah is. And that's not, to, that's not to, 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 to bemoan or to castigate anyone. That's just to say that we haven't done our job. Before I can be in a position to say, Allah, why who, why me, why them, why are you doing this? Maybe I have to take time to learn, well, perhaps I don't really know who Allah is. Because yes, when we come to know of Allah, we learn His endless attributes and we get lost in that reality and we become intimately familiar with Allah who is Al-Latif, the subtle gentle one, who is Al-Jabbar, the one who rectifies and, 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 and fixes and the one who is powerfully dominant and capable, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, he is the one, he is peace, Al-Adl, the just, that when I come to terms with those realities, then I'll say, oh, I, you know, Allah's pretty impressive. <laughs> Allah's, Allah's actually amazing. You know, perhaps as Musa alayhi salam did and as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam did and as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did, I'll come into a place of real trust. That yes, you know, it's all about Allah and, that's, and He's the only one that I really need. And when I realize that, then I'll fall in love with Allah. And so I'll live out a truly beautiful love story in this life between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I will surrender to His will. Whatever you want, Allah, I trust you because I, I know you. And so I trust you and I love you and so I surrender to you. If you will it, Allah, that I don't ever get married because you feel that that's what's best for me and you have something for me better in the afterlife, I trust you. Because I know you love me and I love you. And I know who you are. And so I surrender. But that doesn't mean you stop trying. No, you try. I say this to my community all the time. Even if you try well into your 90s to get married. Into your 90s. Meet Allah trying to get married. Do you think it's arbitrary? I'm, I'm going to stop right now. So forgive me, Sheikh Suleiman. Even, you know, let me say this. Why do you think in the Qur'an, Sayyidina Zakaria, Imra'at Imran, all these, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyida Sarah, all these elderlies who wanted children. <laughs> Did you ever think about that? Why do they want children? Because it's from the beautiful sunnah of this life to get married and have children. And they wanted to meet Allah in that state. And they wanted to leave behind children who would carry the legacy of La ilaha illallah. And so the intention is what matters. Allah just wants to see that you actually care. Is getting married a, a good thing? Oh, getting married is a very good thing. Not just because we like it socially, we want it. No, because Allah decreed that this is a good thing. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded us, get married. So what's, what's, is, is, is the goal that I get married and if I don't get married, then my life is over? Absolutely not. We have to relieve ourselves of that pressure. Parents, relieve your children of that pressure that very daunting pressure of if you don't get married, then who are you? No, I am a servant of Allah. I should pursue marriage well until my later years. And if I meet Allah having never gotten married but pursued it my entire life, then I have met Allah in the most profoundly beautiful standing. Someone who tried their best to do what Allah would like for us to do. And that's a beautiful life lived. Was it challenging? Absolutely. Was it difficult? Certainly. But that's the nature of this dunya. It's an abode of difficulties and trials and tribulations and ups and downs. And then in the afterlife is what? Qarar. Salam. 
it is peace, tranquility, and stability. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tranquility of this life and the tranquility of the afterlife. The peace of this life and the peace of the afterlife. May Allah bring peace, harmony, love, ease, tranquility to our hearts. May He bring us certainty, yaqeen billah, tawakkul ala Allah, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reliance upon Allah. And may Allah put an abundance of knowledge of Him in our hearts, trust of Him in our hearts, love of Him in our hearts, and allow us to be of those who lovingly surrender to Him in this life, to be with Him and to see Him in the company of our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair.